I'm sure just like me, many of you have had parents or grandparents that taught you that old proverb, show me your friends and I'll tell you who you are. They tell us this because they want to make sure that we choose our friends wisely. They want to make sure that we don't choose friendships that's going to take us down the wrong path, land us up in prison, get us on drugs, or even worse, right? So they're telling you, pick somebody that's trustworthy. What they don't tell us though is that we also need to pick friendships where that person will trust us. They'll find us trustworthy. And I think in my adulthood, this has been the most frustrating part of any friendship that I've made. So I have quite a few friends that I've made since I've become an adult, since jumping age 18, because they say the friendships that you made when you were in, you know, younger and in high school, those are the friends, those are all the friends you're ever going to have in life. It's going to be hard for you to make new friendships as an adult. And I found it very hard, maybe because I'm married and, you know, I, I spend most of my time with Joe. But in any case, I have quite a few friends that are really, really cool people. They trust me and I trust them. But I've encountered quite a few friendships where the people did not trust me. And let me tell you, it is frustrating because like I told my dad one time, I'm the most trustworthy person I know. And that's not even me being narcissistic. That's me being real. I feel like when you tell me something, it has to stay confidential. I'm just going to assume it's confidential, all right? And the only time I'll break a confidence is if it has to do with somebody's health. Well, let me tell you a little story before we get into this. So one time, my dad came to me, and he told me he wanted to throw a surprise party for my mom, a birthday party. Now, I knew he had ulterior motives. One, my sister and my mom weren't on good terms, and I think he didn't want to have to have her involved in the party. And two, he didn't want to have to plan it, you know, cook for it, do anything like that. He just wanted to have his name stamped on it. Now, I know my mom, and I knew that she would not like to be surprised like this. She would want to control the party. She would want to tell me who to invite, who not to invite, what to cook, when to have it, how the whole works. So you know what I did? I broke my dad's confidence, and I dialed up my mom, and I say, Mommy, Daddy wants to have this party for you. What do you want me to do? And she said, Good. Just go along with him and you call me every day or I'll call you every day when he leaves to go to work and we will plan this party accordingly. And we did. She told me who to invite, who not to invite. She told me who to invite and tell him to come earlier than the time because it's a surprise. So if it's going to start at 2, tell him to come at noon because they're never going to be on time. She told me what to cook. You know, everything she plotted and planned. <laughs> That's me breaking my dad's confidence, but it was for a good cause because my mom enjoyed that party more. She walked in here, then people yelled surprised, and she cried tears. I pulled her in the room and I say, you're a good little actress. You need an award. You cried. And she says, well, I cried because I can't believe that they showed up on time for my surprise party because, you know, Belize people are notorious for showing up late for stuff. <laughs> so that's one example of me breaking a confidence, right? Anyways, I want to get into the next side of the thing, though. So I had this friendship. I've had a couple of friendships like this, but I'm talking about this specific one where this person, I really treasured the friendship. I thought the person was really supportive of me and everything that I did, I tried to share with them first. Whatever move I was going to make, that person knew right away. And then I started to notice that I really didn't know any of their moves. If something bad was happening to them in their lives, they would contact me first because they needed prayer or they needed uplifting because I think I'm a very uplifting person and I don't go right away to see the glass as half full. I mostly try to see it as, I mean, I'm sorry, half empty. I mostly try to see it as half full, right? I, I'm more on the I'm more on the optimistic side. I didn't used to be like that in my 20s. I was very negative in my 20s, but Joe kind of trained me out. As, no, don't see it that way. Come on, see it this way, right? So anyways... I began to notice that every big move that this person was going to make, they didn't clue me in on it. They would talk to me right up to the 11th hour of the move, and then suddenly you see the big broadcast on the internet. And like my uncle told me recently, the internet is the fault for a lot of families breaking up. No, it's not the internet. It's the people that are doing it, okay? Because you should treasure my friendship enough to tell me, hey, this is what's happened in my life or my kid's life or whatever, and I wanted to share it with you before I posted it on the internet. That's why when I came up COVID positive back in October, I called both my aunties first, my mom's sisters, because to me, they're the matriarchs in the family right now, being that mommy is gone. And I called both of them first to tell them that I was COVID positive because I didn't want it to have them hear it through the grapevine, you know, through somebody dialing them. And I hate that. I hate when people that are supposed to love me even under the guise of a surprise, 
they're supposed to love me but before they give me a heads up and go hey I'm gonna be posting this on the internet wanted you to know they just post it and go to hell with you that's happened to me several times with family members and friends and you know what I usually do is walk away I can't stand the frustration of them doing that to me because I'm trustworthy you know like when I got COVID somebody called and told me to go get the, the antibodies the Regeneron I was petrified to go get those antibodies and this person called and said go get the antibodies because somebody called and told me that it was safe and they took it because they had COVID and um, you know you can trust it and I said well who's the person oh I can't tell you I'm like why is this per I don't know if I should trust this person. Do you trust this person? And then, then the person said, yeah, I trust this person. I'm like, okay, I guess I'm going to go, you know, under you know what you told me. So I, I don't like things like that. Like Joe says he can't stand the family, both sides, his side and my side, because everything's a secret. Why does everything have to be a secret? Yet it's only a secret from us. I guess that's the joke. It's only a secret from us. It's not a secret from nobody else. It's not a secret from the internet, but it's a secret from us. And I, I think I can't, you know, I said it in my last video. I think that's going to be my catchphrase. I can't, I can't deal with that. I'm telling you, I don't care how long the friendship's been, 20 years, five years, two months, two hours. If I start to discern right away that you are keeping stuff from me, but you're telling it to the world and telling it to the internet first, we done. Yakabo. Nunca mas. We're done. I just can't deal with it. You know, when you have a friendship, you have to be able to trust that person, but that person has to be able to trust you. And if you see that that person is not trusting you, at first, check yourself. See if you're a blabbermouth. I always check myself. Am I, did I blab? No, I didn't. Okay. And so once you know you're not the blabbermouth, then you cut that person off. This story is popping in my brain, but I don't even know if it goes along with it, but this is the way these podcasts are going to go. So there was a time where somebody called and told me, I'm not going to say if it's family or friend, somebody called and told me that their daughter just got engaged and they told me, don't tell nobody. So I didn't tell nobody. I didn't even tell my mom. A few hours later, they called and told my mom the same story. My mom was surprised. And so they're like, are you really surprised? Are you pretending? Because I know I just told Barbara and I'm sure she told you. What the, what the F? How can you be sure that I told her? You told me not to tell nobody. So then my mom called and cussed me out saying, you don't think I'm trustworthy? Why wouldn't you tell me? Well, I knew my mom was going to blab. I already knew that. So I, <laughs> I didn't tell her because I was so afraid to get busted that I told, right? And so after that, I don't think the relationship was ever the same with that person that told me the secret. Because when the daughter finally put it on the internet that they were engaged, I just hit the like button. I didn't say congratulations. And so later the daughter got mad at me. I, well, the daughter got mad at me then, but I didn't find out till later. And then she's all like, you didn't even tell me congratulations. I'm like, I was so triggered and gun shy at that point because I'm like I don't even know what I'm supposed to say I don't even know if they were supposed to know that I knew this you know what I mean what do I say I just hit like you know I didn't know that there were a bunch of ethics or etiquettes or whatever that I had to follow on Facebook to hit I just always hit like and keep it moving when it comes if it's a close friend or a family I will not wish them happy birthday on Facebook because they're gonna say well you wish so and so happy birthday but you didn't wish me happy birthday so if you're in my phone I'll text you happy birthday if you're not I won't tell you that on the internet. I just don't. I just don't because it's too much stress on me. I shouldn't have to deal with all this stress when I'm trying to come up with the next content idea, right? So to finish off this little podcast, guys, choose your friends wisely. So choose people that are trustworthy, but also check to see if they are trusting you. If they're not trusting you, that means they're not allowing themselves to be vulnerable with you. They want you to be vulnerable with them but they're not reciprocating and it's not going to work. You're going to find yourself frustrated a lot because you know, you're not going to be able to trust them after a while because you're going to go, dang, that's another surprise that slapped me in the face. You know, if you're going to feel awful about you, it's going to mess with your self-esteem. If you're with somebody that you don't trust, if it's a friend, if it's a mate, whatever it is, if you're with somebody you don't trust, it's going to mess with your relationship. If you have a child that, you know, they don't trust you, you, you got you to check yourself to see why that child doesn't trust you. And once you know you're being trustworthy as a parent to them, then it's their issue and you have to help them work on their vulnerability. I can't even say the word vulnerability. <laughs> I hope that this blessed you today because that is my intention with these podcasts. It's to just talk in your ear while you're getting your work done. 
and then also try to share some of the wisdom that I've gleaned over the years. I'm not the end all, be all, I don't know everything, I don't even pretend to know everything, but I can share with you the things that frustrate me. And this is one of my biggest pet peeves. If I make a friendship and I see that the person doesn't trust me, the friendship will inevitably end. It might take two years, it might take five years. Nowadays, because I'm getting older and I'm getting less patient, it's taking two hours <laughs> and I'm gone. Anyways, guys, thanks for listening, and I'll see you guys on the next upload. Bye.